Here at Crowntop we've developed a new engine control system. It's designed for the JCB 444 diesel max and the six-cylinder C2 c engine range. Both these engines have a complex common rail injection system which is fully controlled by an electronic engine management system, both meet tier 3 emission requirements. The reason for the development of our own system was to enable us to supply our customers with the latest en diesel engine technology but relieve the headache of added complexity. Our plug and play system makes the installation as painless as possible and gives both fixed and variable engine speed control. The control system comprises of three main components. We have a control panel, a fuse box and a bespoke engine lid. A bit more detail on the control panel. It's an IP65 enclosure with four AVMs for ease of mounting. Situated in the front is an IPU IntelliDrive light controller, able to work with both 12 and 24 volt. Depending on the spec, it has engine speed switches. There are four options available. In standard spec, shown here, we have a speed up and speed down increment decrement switch. Option one has two latching switches, which gives up to three fixed speeds and a return to idle. Option two is a zero to five volt analog hand stroke foot throttle, shown here. And option three is a zero to five volt analog throttle again, but through a CAN interface located in the back of the enclosure. It also has an on-off ignition switch, which comes with two keys, and one of which has a waterproof protective cover. And with the key removed, the entire system is disabled. The control panel comes standard with a two meter loom to connect between the fuse box and the control unit. There is an option of a three meter loom that can be connected in series with a two meter loom, which gives five meters between the fuse box and the panel. We have carried out tests for the JCB 24 volt variant and managed to have full faultless control at a distance of 30 meters. This makes it able to suit many different industrial and marine applications. The engine control is fully configurable, i.e. throttle type, operating speeds, max speed, engine protection and has the ability to cater for some machine inputs. All settings can be preset and password locked. A bit more detail on the fuse box. It's again an IP65 enclosure with four ABMs to enable the fitment to an engine bracket or canopy, etc. It has an integral PCB, which with the configuration of relays and fuses makes it suitable for either JCB, CSU, 12 and 24 watt variants. The connections onto the fuse box include the power on the ground, cables that can be connected to the battery, not the starter motor, the engine loop, the control panel, and then the additional JCB 24 volt is the interface to a 24 to 12 volt converter, and then the J1939 diagnostic interface for both JCB and CSU, but CSU has the addition of an interface loom. Please note that the JCB ECU is only 12 volt, so the addition of a 12 volt converter is required. This is normally supplied with the engine and plugs into our fuse box. The CSU has a dual voltage ECU. All that is required is an inline resistor for the fuel lift pump. This can be easily purchased as it is an original CSU part. For more detail on the bespoke engine loop, this is where it interfaces in on the CSU. This acts as the interface between the engine ECU and the fuse box. It includes the CAN bus, full control of the starter motor, alternator, fuel lift pump with whiff sensor. The optional grid heater relay control is also included, however an additional external relay would be required. Some more detail about the control panel and the ID light controller. We turn the key on. You hear the fuel pump buzz and we have the LCD display with a nice green backlight. As you can see, we have three modes, off, manual and auto. It'll always be in manual, that's one of the settings that is password locked, so you cannot change it. The only reason to change it is if you have an auto start, for instance. You can see a ready, which shows we are ready to start. We have a taco, which shows the true RPM. And a timer, which we can set a, a pre-start time if required. We have mode buttons again, which we change the mode, they're inactive. We have the green start button, which starts the engine. The red stop button, which stops the engine, very self-explanatory. You can also stop the engine by turning the ignition key off. We have a bolt reset button and a horn reset button. Some page details, which is more to do with the configuration. We don't really need to go into that detail. An enter button to enter that configuration data. And we have an arrow which scrolls through. 
an alarm list, which is the fault stored inside the controller itself, an ECU alarm list, which shows the fault code data inside the OEM's ECU. Then we have a, a bit of a history, the number of starts, run hours, engine stop and shutdown, and time to next service. And then we have the live CAN data, which obviously changes as the engine runs real time. We have the addition of some warning lamps, the status, if they're fitted and they're not applicable in this instance. And then we have the uh, binary output setup shows you the function correctly you can do some tests in here. And then we have the binary inputs, which as you can see we've got speed up and speed down selected. And then we've got some analogue inputs which are not applicable and vehicle back regarded. And then to start the engine you just purely press start. JCB engine on the 24 volt. We have to design a delay so when the key is actually switched off, the display stays lit for about five seconds before it switches off. And also, we've seen a warning for charge fail in the crank condition due to the heavy drain on the starter motor. This normally indicates a suspect battery reserve voltage. It's not an issue to be concerned with, you just have to, if it appears when it starts, Hit the fault reset and it'll disappear. The alternator is charging, the battery's obviously good enough to start it, so there's no real concern.